proportions, remember, are nothing more than equal fractions. Where that line came from, but um, if you have three fourths, that would be proportional to what fraction over there? With eight on the bottom, what would I put on top? Charles six. six. Why? Because four times eight and three times two is six. Yeah, if you go from four to eight, you multiply by two, and then three to multiply by two. But the question happens, what happens if you get a fraction that looks like this? Um, 12 over 16 equals y over, let's see, there's 18 maybe, y over 20. Well, there's a couple ways to do this, but one of them we're going to ignore for just a little bit here. What do you do when you can't go from 16 to 20 and you don't know what that multiplier is there? Here is what today's whole lesson is about. One thing you know about fractions is that they're di diagonals. When you multiply them together, they're equal. 4 times 6 is 24, and 8 times 3 is 24. So if you can figure out what number times 16 gives you the same number as 12 times 20, you're going to have your answer. We call that, write this down in big letters, we are going to use what's called cross, nope, products. You want to decorate this word as best you can. Cross products, those who I want to do it in Illinois colors, but I guess I have to Cross products. And what that means is this. When you have a ratio or proportion that you don't know just by doing that, this thing up here, you do this. You multiply this times this, which is 16 times some number we don't know. But that has to equal what you get when you multiply 20 times 12. And it means you're going to have to do a little bit of work. But you're not afraid of work. 20 times 12 is 240. And I just need to figure out what number times 16 gives me 240. How would I do that? What number times 16 gives me 240? That means it is a division problem. 240 divided by 16, looks like it is 3 times 16 going to 80, 5. This number up here would be 15. Cross products are what it's all about today. Now, let me give you one. In case you're thinking I could do that easier, something like this. 7 over 8 equals, I don't know, 5 over what number? Now here's where things will get a little ugly, because this does not work out evenly. Even if you could have done that other one before, you won't be able to do this one. What am I going to do here? I'm going to use cross products. I'm going to multiply. And I always try to multiply the one that has the letter first, just because I like to keep that on the left side. 7 times n. 7 times n equals 8 times 5. So 7 times what number equals 40? How am I going to figure that out? You're going to divide 40 by 7, and that's not going to look pretty, but we will get an answer. How many times does 7 go into 40? 5. 5 times. We get 35. I subtract. And I make this a fraction. 5 and 5 sevenths is actually my answer. Not pretty, but it is true. 7 over 8 equals 5 over 5 and 5 sevenths. Unfortunately, as you get to higher level math, not always do things make a lot of sense. Um, let me give you another one. Let's do this one. Example problem. 10 
is to 10 is to 15 as 30 is to what number? And what would that look like? 10 is to 15, where as is an equal sign, as 30 is to what number? And then again, ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't do cross products unless I have to. Do you need to do cross products on this one? No, why not? Because you can go from 10 to 30 by multiplying by 3. So 15 times 3 is 45. You only really need to use cross products if you can't figure it out by just multiplying top and bottom by some numbers.